as soon as we get into medical school, we start to learn different subjects, different departments, we grow as we progress through our medical educational career, and also we become fond of some specialty. By the time we finish our medical education, we all have more or less a specialty in mind that we want to pursue in our further training. To ease that process when you transition your medical care in the United Kingdom, we started this series of your specialty of interest. And in today's installment, we are going to discuss about clinical radiology training in the United Kingdom. If this is the first time you're checking out our channel, welcome. Basically what we do is we run a website that's totally free known as roadtouk.com and it will explain the ins and outs about everything related to the United Kingdom and what it takes for you to work as a doctor in the NHS. So if you've not already, please stalk us on all of our social media. Find us on Facebook, find us on Twitter, Instagram, and of course, YouTube. Don't forget to subscribe. Hi everyone, my name is Ibrahim. I work as a doctor in the NHS. And as I said before, today we're going to discuss about the clinical radiology training pathway in the United Kingdom. We have covered various specialties before in this series. Before asking in the comment below that can you cover this specialty, I would strongly advise you to go through our playlist and see what specialties we've already covered. Now let's jump into clinical radiology training in the United Kingdom. So we're going to discuss at length about the specialty training and career in radiology, which will involve talking about the, the pathway of training, as well as the different um, aspects of uh, how an international medical graduates. That will be our focus today, how an international medical graduate can enter into radiology training in the United Kingdom. So obviously we first discuss about what does the radiology training in the United have. Uh, so the, the initial bit is quite clear. The training involves producing a general clinical radiologist, but also the training involves uh, growing special interest in one or two special interest module which is established uh, in the curriculum. So uh, you cannot just only become a general radiologist. I mean, you can if you want to, but you also have the option within the training program to grow special interest in uh, one or two modules. And at the same time, there is a established subspecialty, which is a, have a separate curriculum uh, uh, to go through after this radiology, clinical radiology curriculum. Um, and then all the whole discussion today and um, uh, the everything that I'll, I'm going to explain is based on the new radiology curriculum that can be found on GMC website. So if you um, are f seeing this video much later than it was published, I would advise that please go through the GMC's um, latest curriculum, which is obviously uh, a like, you know, made by the Royal College of Radiologists and then GMC accepts it. So go through that um, and, and see and understand what the curriculum entails uh, to train a clinical radiologist in the United Kingdom. So radiology specialty training, this slide explains the bare bone structure of the training and how it is um, structured for UK graduates. And we will insert where international medical graduates comes into this whole picture. So as you can see, obviously after the medical graduation, you go into foundation training for UK graduates, and then you go through a recruitment process to apply for clinical radiology training and special interest training. Those are actually combined. It's a run through training. There is no separation of core radiology training or specialist radiology training. Even though I put FRCR in between, the FRCR is not an entrance exam like MRCP, MRCSR. It's kind of sort of spread throughout the radiology training, starting from ST1 to ST5, and you have to pass different parts of FRC exam to progress within your training program. For international medical graduates, obviously after medical graduation is completed, they try to get to uh, the point where they obtain GMC registration first. After obtaining GMC registration, then they 
uh, can enter foundation training if they're eligible. If they get provisional GMC registration, they can enter foundation training by UKFP. If they are not eligible to apply for a foundation training program by UKFP, they have other options like joining an FY2 standalone program or joining a non-training job uh, advertised by the NHS hospitals. But if they can't join a foundation training program, their target is to obtain a CREST form which stands for Certificate of Readiness to Enter Specialty Training, which basically proves the equivalency between the foundation training and the work they have done outside foundation training. So to be honest, this, this foundation training, it has a lot of confusion among the international medical graduates. And in later slides, we will discuss further what's the different pathways uh, an international medical graduate can pursue. But for an international medical graduate, they may not have to go through FY1 or FY2 year, but if you go through foundation training by UKFP in the beginning, then you have to go through FY1, FY2. Then after the recruitment process, which takes radiology training, you go through ST1, ST2, and ST3. And obviously uh, the last two is special interest training, which is ST4 and ST5. So it's a five years of training program, which is a run through training and the FRCA exam and other workplace based assessments to test your capabilities in practice, according to the curriculum, is embedded into the whole training program. So please remember there is no separate recruitment at any stage. So the recruitment happens only at ST1 level training. As I was saying that what's the difference of all these things? Like, do I do UKFP? Do I do FI2 standalone? Please, I highly recommend that you watch this video by Dr. Breeze where she explains the different pathways right after getting GMC registration, what type of GMC registration you get and what an IMG should pursue. The link would be found in the description box below or any of the corners above. Now, this training has a restriction criteria. If you are um, aware of how surgical training, core surgical training had a restriction of ST1 training, this radiology also have one. It has 18 months or less experience. So it requires you to have 18 months or less experience in radiology. And it's equivalent to a full-time equivalent job and it's in any experience in any country only in this specialty, so radiology. If you have worked in radiology, in postgraduate training or any sort of radiology work in your country, you have to count how many months has it been. If it has been more than 18 months, then you'll not be allowed to apply for ST1 radiology training. What happens to you later on, we will discuss it further as we continue this video. Uh, so obviously I want to clarify this a bit over qualification criteria and there's a lot of confusion around it. So you are a registered doctor and you have 18 months of radiology experience. That means you are eligible for ST1 application Okay, you are a registered doctor, you have less than 18 months of experience in radiology. So this experience is combined in your country, in the United Kingdom, in any other countries, you're eligible for ST1 application. But you are a registered doctor, you have more than 18 months of experience and your ST1 application is now, you are overqualified. So remember that 18 months is the cutoff experience criteria for radiology ST1 experience. Now, we would explore a bit what special interest modules exist. So um, as per my understanding of the curriculum, the special interest modules or special interest training is largely based on the availability of those special interests in the areas that you get into training program. Obviously you want, if you have a vested interest in any of that, that you have to make your training program director known that you want to specialize in this specific special interest uh, and, and, and go from there after third year of your training. Uh, it becomes split into 60-40 sort of thing that you do 60% of general radiology and then 40% of uh, special interest. Then ST5, you do 60% of special interest and 40% of general radiology. So you have to keep your general radiology skills up to date along with your special interest in your last two years. So obviously three years is doing the general radiology and then two years you do mix of general radiology and the special interest. And obviously if you want to pursue further training in subspecialty, the only subspecialty that is, is established is um, uh, interventional radiology, uh, 
which we will talk about. So general radiology is the, the first one. Uh, obviously, it's the three years of you, you continuously train in general radiology throughout your training program. And the, the special interest module, which a lot of people wants to know, can I be this radiologist? Can I be that radiologist? So breast radiology is one of them. Cardiac radiology, thoracic radiology, GI radiology, uh, molecular imaging and radionucleotide radiology, pediatric, musculoskeletal, and then comes neuroradiology, head and neck, cross-sectional imaging, urogynecological, and then some core interventional like ultrasound-guided biopsies or extra-guided uh, biopsy or aspirations or whatever, this core interventional. And as I said, there is some specialist uh, subspecialty, which is interventional radiology. In short, in the UK, we always call them IR. This patient would be seen by IR. This patient, the IR does all the fancy stuff, from thrombectomy and all the other procedures. Um, and that's it. So that's the special interest training looks like. So you choose which one you want to become. So at the end of the day, your title becomes consultant radiologist with a special interest in head and neck radiology. Consultant radiologist with a special interest in musculoskeletal radiology. So you see, that's how the training makes you specialist in um, certain areas. This is a very valid question, how competitive a radiology training is. And to be honest, it is a competitive training. As I said in our previous videos, the competitiveness of a training program is largely based on how many posts are available. The applications number that you will see, please don't get fooled by this, as in all the people who applied in radiology training did not only apply in radiology training, because as a doctor, you can apply in multiple specialties. They, can, they may have applied in GP, they may have applied in anesthetics and surgery or whatever the fancy. The thing is, yes, obviously you can prepare your portfolio for a training application focusing on only a handful of specialty because if you focused on creating your portfolio for surgical training, probably it will not be as applicable for internal medicine training um, uh, per se. So, so that's what I'm saying. The, the, the application may not be only for radiology training, but it gives you an idea uh, overall how many applications actually get submitted for the posts available. So in 2019, we can see 1,095 applications for 302 posts across the United Kingdom, making it a fairly competitive specialty. Um, in 2020, there were 1,308 applications for 311 posts, a bit more competitive. You see the number of posts increased only by eight and the applications increased by 300. And you can see in 2021, uh, the applications increased higher, even though there was a, a small number of posts increased, making it even more competitive. So obviously the, the graph is telling you that the more years are passing and the training has become more competitive. And I think which is true for most of the specialties. Uh, this is also another um, very commonly asked question. How much can I earn as a radiology? And there is also a very common question asked through our viewers that will I get paid during the training program? Yes, you will get paid during the training program. The training program is a paid job. You don't have to pay Royal College or your hospitals to give you training. That's, that's not how it works in the United Kingdom. So you get paid as a trainee, and the, and the figures that I'm going to show you here, this is only uh, the basic unbanded salary. So you, this is not taking into consideration any on-calls you will do as a duty flow radiologist uh, uh, it, during your training program. Uh, and uh, depending on how well-staffed or depending on how um, how many number of people doing the rota, you may get paid more if there's less people and you do more on-call work and you get paid, you may get paid less if there is more people and you do less on-call work. So that's kind of very um, uh, vague and that's why we don't want to put that into figure. But obviously this, you don't only make this whatever we're showing you right now. So as an ST1, ST2, the salary per year is 40,257 pounds 
And obviously on top of that, you make banding, uh, which depends on how much on-call work you do. ST5 to ST3 to ST5 is the second nodal point, which is the 51,017, as the consultant starting salary is the same for all specialties, is 82,356. Uh, uh, but then again, consultant, when you start as a consultant, your salary increases every year, and there are other aspects of increasing salaries, clinical excellence awards, and all the other stuff. And as a consultant, you can also get involved in private practice, um, which is a complete, a, a separate discussion, but there are other uh, ways you can earn more than your day-to-day -day NHS work. If you don't choose to be a completely NHS radiologist, you can choose to be a private radiologist as well. So there's that. Now, I'm going to discuss this a bit more in detail. Uh, we have already discussed um, uh, the radiology training structure and the special interest modules and all the other stuff, but I'm going to just walk you through, as an international medical graduate, what I would have done if I wanted to get into clinical radiology training instead of my internal medicine training. Okay, so obviously the first thing is you have to be a medical graduate and you have to obtain full GMS registration. I'm just saying that not have to, you can obtain provisional registration, then the pathway is exactly as I said in my previous slides. So if you do full GMS registration, you can take any pathways. Like you can take PLAB exam, you can take MRCP exam, you can take MRCS exam, whichever you fancy and whichever you find like you know suitable for your career. Because if you take MRCP exam, you can still apply for radiology training and your applying for medicine training still stays open. If you take MRCS exam, you can still apply for radiology training and also your possibility of getting into a surgical training also increases because that proves commitment to surgical specialties as well. So you get full GMS registration, whichever pathway you choose. Obviously, the first job that you start after getting full GMS registration could be foundation standalone, which is an FY2 standalone, or could be a non-training job. So for the ease of discussion and as the majority of the doctors start this, I just included this one. So you get into a non-training job. And this non-training job is your time to build your portfolio to get into the radiology training. Now, which specialty do you do this non-training job in? So from my experience, if you want to build a portfolio for this um, uh, surgery or radiology which have overqualification criteria if you're not overqualified already you can start looking for radiology non-training job yes there are some trust grade um, uh, fellow type clinical fellow type jobs uh, uh, scattered around the united kingdom but uh, in my experience there are not many in number that there is no point hiring non-training radiology until and unless you already have radiology experience, which will make you overqualified for ST1 training anyway. So uh, other specialties which I would advise probably would be um, emergency medicine, acute medicine, where you get to see a lot of scans uh, because those are almost the front door of the hospital and uh, you get to interact with different radiologists as well, uh, requesting scans, discussing scan reports and all the other stuff. And uh, basically you get in touch with um, radiology a lot in those specialties. So do consider starting in emergency medicine or acute medicine if you want to pursue um, clinical radiology training application. And during that training application, you have to build your portfolio and also work towards getting a CREST form signed. So this is the task during your first non-training job, building up a portfolio for training application and at the same time, so when you build a portfolio for a training application, it's easy because those are, those are the things you will do for crest form signing as well. And I put this exclamation mark, remember if you start in a radiology non-training job and you have somehow you got into radiology non-training job and you don't have 18 months of experience so remember that it's had the clock has started and it will count uh, towards uh, the 18 months of uh, experience so after the crest form is signed then you have to go through a recruitment process the radiology training has an exam in the recruitment process which is called multi-specialty recruitment assessment it's nothing specific to radiology it has um, it's the same exam that you take for a GP training or um, obs and gynae training, uh, this is just a, a way to 
um, shortlist different people. So MSRA is a, a considerable amount of preparation is needed because if you score high, uh, it increases your chance of getting shortlisted uh, for interview. Um, and um, MSRA has two papers, situational judgment test and um, a clinical problem solving paper. Uh, the preparation methods are available online. If you Google, you will find out the different question banks that you can solve and prepare for MSRA exam. And that's the that's the, the thing that makes or break your application. You have to score really well to get into the interview. And at the same time, your portfolio as well serves a good purpose of uh, like you know giving you a pre-interview score which shortlists you for interview obviously then you have to do well in interview and then and get offer for clinical radiology training so this basically is the pathway so remember during the non-training job wherever you're starting in the nhs you have to have complete focus on how to build your portfolio if you're still confused about what is a training job and what is a non-training job check out this video i have explained what these jobs are and uh, what the difference in applying is uh, and I'm just going to tell you like you know the most um, commonly asked question will I get paid in non-training job or will I get paid more in a training job to be honest the pay is the same it based on the level of your working if you're working as an FI2 level you're basically getting the same pay as an almost the same pay as in um, an FI2 trainee. If you're working as a non-trainee at CT1 or ST1 level, you're getting the same pay as an ST1 trainee. So it depends on the level you are working. And obviously training has a progression in their career and non-training. But as I said, just watch that video as you'll be probably linked in one of the this corner. Yeah. And watch that video. Now, this is the burning question. How? You said I have to build my portfolio that basically makes my training application what is it? What do I have to do? So um, I think over the past few years after COVID, the, the self-assessment scoring system has changed and it, it's varying from year to year. But there are some core underlying things which you which remains the same. Uh, and I think uh, we will just touch those points. And at the same time, there are some things which gives you point but not that attainable like you know who can attain a phd in this period of time i mean probably some people can like you know i'm not saying that it's not possible but majority of them will not have a phd when they apply for st1 training applications even the phd gives you some points uh i don't think you should spend your effort on getting a PhD before your ST1 training application in radiology. So what other things, achievable things, is a clinical radiology experience. If you have taster weeks in the United Kingdom, one or two full taster weeks following a radiology consultant or understanding how clinical radiology works in the radiology department, you can get points for that. Obviously, it, it has to have reflection that what you have learned and at the same time, uh, if possible, a reference from the radiology consultant. So you can arrange for taster weeks through your postgraduate medical education center and you definitely definitely have to do that uh, if you want to do uh, radiology training because this is so easy to get and at the same time it gives you points in your training application as well so get some one week or two week of taster weeks which will be counted as a study leave from your study leave allocation so even as a non-training doctor in ed if you go through find a radiology consultant or find a postgraduate medical education center that i want to do a taster week in radiology how can i go forward they would be able to help you. The next thing is audits and QIPs. And obviously, uh, the more it is related to radiology, the better it is. And obviously, the more it can change a clinical guideline or change the clinical practice, the better it is. So you have to prove that it has changed clinical practice or clinical guidelines. So just doing one audit means nothing because you just found out what works and what's not working. Implement something and then re-audit, that actually makes thing more useful and that actually makes thing more presentable and will get you higher points as well so obviously remember you have to re-audit and prove uh, that whether it has caused any change by auditing this or like you know is an impact on the uh, sticking to the guidelines and obviously quality improvement projects are the same you have to improve you have to prove that you have improved the quality uh, teaching, obviously, the teaching has different denominators in how many points they give. The highest point would be if you have organized a teaching program. Uh, remember that, like, you know, uh, you are applying for a radiology training. As an FY2 level, if you say that I'm teaching how to interpret chest X-ray, 
is that actually meaningful teaching? Because how can you teach chest X-ray interpretation? Uh, I'm not saying that you can't, but it, it's just it's just think about it. You, you're not even a radiology training, but you already know how to interpret chest X-ray. How who trained you? I mean, if you have a background like that, that's obviously doable. But think about that. Just because you have taught yourself. Uh, uh, um, it's, it, it doesn't make that you are actually providing meaningful teaching to others, but organizing a chest extra teaching. So try to do something simpler, like, you know, uh, it doesn't have to be always radiology related teaching. Um, uh, it, it could be anything. So focus on organizing a teaching program, not necessarily a radiology teaching program, because I don't think you're expected to organize a radiology training program when you're not even a radiology trainee. Uh, the first and the second thing is, as I was speaking, membership exam. So if you complete MRCP or MRCS, that gives you points in your radiology training application as well. So you see, you can actually have uh, uh, kill two birds or multiple birds in one stone. So if you take MRCP exams, you, you, you have doors open to apply for radiology training. If you use your time in the non-training job to gather more stuff for radiology training application. And obviously research and publication, if it's PubMed cited, these are the things, uh, it's bottom on my list because um, to be honest, I think research or publication or presentation, those are pretty important things and a lot of people will not have it, but if you manage to have some, uh, that would be like, you know, push you forward in the shortlisting and uh, get you an interview. Uh, the first thing, last thing is postgraduate degrees, as I said, MSc, MD, MS or um, a PhD, if you can, that also gives and makes your training application. So I think, I, I can't think of any other things that builds your portfolio. If you have any questions regarding like, you know, whether this is applicable or whether this is good for my CV or portfolio, please do comment below. Now, the last portion is Caesar route. As I said, if you are overqualified for ST1 training application and you couldn't get into uh, clinical radiology training program, so what do you do? So that's where you take the specialist route. So CSR route is called Certificate of Eligibility of Specialist Recognition or Registration. So this is done by General Medical Council. You apply for um, a, a, like, you know, a CSER for a CCT specialty in radiology through General Medical Council. So General Medical Council has an extensive criteria, uh, like, you know, how to submit your evidence. They have, like, if you just Google CSER application criteria for GMC radiology, you'll find out there is a PDF published by the Royal College of Radiologists. I think Royal College of Radiologists gives CSER to two specialties, clinical on Ecology and clinical radiology. So um, uh, just go through the clinical radiology bits, what evidence they want. Obviously, there are some exams uh, that or equivalent exams you have to prove that you have to pass FRCR is one of them. If you complete FRCR exam through your postgraduate training in your country, uh, obviously that will be uh, necessary. Or if there is some other fellowship exam which is in your country, which is equivalent to FRCR, you'll have to complete that as well. So FRCR itself is not a mandatory thing, but you have to pass some sort of specialist exam in your country, which is equivalent to FRCR. So you have to provide evidence of skills and experience. You have to have some papers and presentation. You have to do some relevant courses. You have to audits and research. And obviously, lastly, structured references from your consultants, references from consultants that, um, uh, you know, you are eligible for specialist registration. So this is something that is not that can be done if you have gone through a very structured postgraduate training program in your country and you have all the things ready and you can prove to GMC that in my country whatever training program I went through is in line with the radiology training in the United Kingdom and thus I want to apply for a specialist registration directly via the CSER route. So there is some CCT specialty, which is the general radiologist. There is some specific non-specialty, uh, non-CCT specialty, like you can apply for becoming a consultant in breast radiology, cardiac radiology, if that is an established subspecialty in your country. So their complete pathway in GMC's website, how can you do that? So that will be the pathway for established radiologist outside the United Kingdom who wants to come and pursue the radiology career in the United Kingdom and get GMC registration. As a specialist, Caesar route is for you. There you have it. I tried to discuss um, 
as concisely as possible uh, uh, the clinical radiology uh, training pathway in the United Kingdom. Uh, if you have any questions uh, regarding radiology training or other bits and bobs that we've discussed in this video, please, please comment in the comment box below. Uh, and as always, if you have not subscribed to us um, in YouTube, please do subscribe and, uh, uh, and follow us in Facebook, um, Instagram, and Twitter. Also, we have an amazing newsletter, which we have revamped recently. Uh, do follow us and subscribe to us in this newsletter to keep up to date with everything that's happening uh, uh, in your medical care in the UK. And also, we have an amazing forum run by our ambassadors and us as well, where you can discuss any questions you have. And um, at the end of the day, if you want to discuss your personal experience and at the same time your personal uh, career opportunities in the United Kingdom, you can book a session with either me or a breeze uh, in our personalized guidance session that we offer. Until next time, thank you for watching. Have a good day.